Hi, this is Danny Ryan, and welcome to the Three Wheel Podcast. I've got uh, Bruce Harple with me today. Thank you uh, again, Bruce, for joining me for the podcast. Absolutely. Glad to be here, Danny. Great. We wanted to take some time in here. I was joking as we were prepping for this that we could probably talk on this subject for much longer than 20 minutes. I'm going to try to hold us to 20 minutes, but uh, probably a subject that's near and dear to a lot of folks' hearts uh, at Three Wheel, which is talking about managing customer expectation and talking in, in particular about Scrum. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you want to talk about today. Yeah, what I want to talk about, Danny, is, you know, when we think about managing customer expectations, you know, we, we kind of talk about the iron triangle mm -hmm. and uh, the three things that we want to really set expectations around and then manage, you know, throughout the life of a project is, you know, scope, schedule, and budget. And of course, you know, those things all impact one another. Uh, so if one either, you know, increases or, or decreases, it actually does affect the other parts of that triangle. And uh, so I just want to talk about, you know, how our Agile Scrum process really helps us, you know, manage, you know, those three parts of the Iron Triangle and how we kind of manage that on a you know, regular basis uh, with our customers. Awesome, awesome. And it's, uh, with this, it's, uh describing, you probably have to get started off with a couple of definitions of some in, important terms. And in particular, for folks who are listening in, uh, we use an agile process called Scrum. And I, what's, what's interesting about this conversation is Scrum's typically used in, in large development shops. And, and uh, we're using it in the situation where we're tr trying to develop uh, products and applications for customers. And so because we're using it, it's, we have, there's some modifications that we need to do to set those up, expectations up properly. So if you could, sort of at a high level, talk, talk me through user stories, story points, all that good stuff. Yeah, so one of the, the key you know, artifacts in Agile Scrum that kind of drives and really defines the scope of a project is something that is collectively called the product backlog, mm. kind of an Agile Scrum term. And within a product backlog, there are a set of what we call user stories. And a user story really, in one sentence, describes a user's interaction with that application and the benefit that that, that might result as a, you know, as a result of that customer's interaction or that user's interaction with the system. So a user story is just a way for us to you know, redefine a requirement uh, into those three parts. There's a user, there's an action, and there's a benefit. And uh, that kind of forms that baseline of uh, the scope for a project. And then one of the things that we do, another term that I'll use is called story points. So story points are the way that we actually size the effort to implement a specific user story. And, and a story point is just a number. We follow the Fibonacci system. Uh, it could be anywhere from a, a 0.5, you know, up to a 20 or, or higher. So the higher the number, the more difficult it is to implement that specific uh, user story. So, you know, we assign a, a story point or a size effort to implement every single user story. And that really becomes kind of the foundation for the scope because the, the, the scope is the user stories. And we actually take those story points and we actually convert those into hours. And obviously once we have hours, we can convert those into dollars, you know, which is your budget. So that's your scope. User stories make up the scope. And then the story points converted into hours and dollars. That makes up your budget. And then we take those user stories and, and group them you know, logically into a sequence that makes sense to implement them. And also kind of grouping them by size. Mm -hmm. And we group all those into sprints. Uh, and a sprint is, typically we work in two-week sprints, and so a sprint is just a duration in which you are going to deliver a certain number of user stories to the customer. So mm -hmm. once we take all those user stories and size them with story points, we then group those into sprints, and those sprints define the schedule. So that's kind of the baseline, you know, kind of the scope, the user stories, the, the budget is converted from the story points, and then the schedule is the number of sprints and the sprint durations that we uh, you know, plan at the start of a project. And so these, um, 
the user stories and the story points and this calculation of time and money that all goes into this to the statement of work for the customer or how does that work yeah that, that's right Danny we actually go through this process during the sales cycle and uh -huh. as we talk to a prospective customer and you know we try to understand their business problem we really uh, drill down into some you know lower level requirements and actually build out the product backlog and all the user stories Did and you know, that, that's been very successful for us from the perspective of, uh, you know, customers love it. We, we kind of play back these user stories because the reaction typically is, you know, these guys really get my business problem. They get what I'm trying to accomplish. And because we review that backlog with them in the sales cycle to make sure that, you know, we have correctly, correctly kind of restated their requirements in these user stories. And uh, we also go through with them in the sales cycle and prioritize all those user stories. So they tell us you know, what items are must-have items versus should have, could have, or if it's a won't have, it's something that could, that could wait to a later phase. And, and we obviously size everything. And then those user stories are actually grouped into something we call feature groups, which is just a logical grouping of, of stories. Um, and then, you know, with that, uh, and we size everything, convert it to hours and dollars, you know, customers can actually then go through that and, and actually they can exclude stories, exclude features. They can really kind of take that whole product backlog and, and kind of get it sized to their budget. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we end up working with them to help them, you know, determine what's, what's most important, where they're going to get the most value, you know, for their investment. And, and that's when we kind of establish that baseline. You know, so what is the baseline of user stories that are must-have? We have to have it in this release of the solution. And then you know, what's the size of that story points? And obviously that gets converted to, you know, as I said, you know, hours, dollars, and a schedule. Does the customer pay for this estimate? Uh, no. No, that's something that we, uh, we do during the, the sales cycle. Now, I, I will say when we start a project, you know, in some cases, there may be some requirements that we haven't had the time to really vet out in detail. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, what we'll do in the sales cycle, if there's any kind of, you know, technical risk or uncertainty or any kind of requirement risk or uncertainty, we'll, we'll tend to put user stories in our backlog called spikes. Mm -hmm. and, and a spike is just, it's just a, a, a story that says, you know, we didn't have time to flush out this technical concept or we didn't have time to flush out this set of business requirements. So we're going to allocate a little bit of time in the first sprint of the project that we call sprint zero to further vet those things out. And then we can at, at that point determine, you know, once we vet more detailed requirements or maybe we do a proof of concept, you know, to show, um, you know, to vet out a technical risk or, or to present a concept to a customer. And we can say after that review and after those spikes are completed, we can then sit back down with the customer and say, you know, this particular uh, spike is resulting in, in these results, which you know impacts the product backlog in this way. You know, and it, it might not have any impact on the backlog in the way of additional user stories or anything like that, but it gives us another checkpoint after that sprint zero, which is a, which is the first sprint. You know, to recalibrate, you know, budget schedule and scope if we need to. And this, I, just to point out a couple of things that I think are really valuable, you know, mentioning that this is something we do as part of the sales process. And for folks who haven't gone through the sales process with us, it's uh, it, um, Bruce puts together a very detailed spreadsheet. And one of the, the benefits of, of having that is you can see where the, um, basically get a breakdown on where the work effort and what, what's involved. And the other thing I like about that for customers is not only can they prioritize things, but they can, it's almost like a shopping basket type of approach where you can say, well, maybe I don't have the budget to go after this, but you can play through some scenarios. I know with customers, you just love having, you know, that control over what are we going after and, you know, help, help the customer basically uh, size out the project um, appropriately. I think it's just a great thing to, to, to give, to hand over to people. And, 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 um, it's just, a, a, a really, it's fun going through the estimates that you guys come up with and, and walking that through and, 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 and then the customer seeing it and getting feedback from them 
is uh, it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, Danny, I think just to add to that, I think what customers really appreciate is that it lets them see, you know, for them to implement a, a certain feature, you know, feature group or, or set of user stories, you know, once they see a, a price attached to that, mm -hmm. you know, it really resonates with them. Because at that point, they're making an investment decision. You know, they, they can decide, am I gonna, is my business going to get enough benefit you know, from this feature group or set of stories you know, that it's worth making this investment. And, you know, that's, you know, we're really just trying to give them the, the data points that will help them make, you know, what we hope are the right decisions for their business. Mm -hmm. So we start off with this statement of work that has a certain number of story points uh, against it. And of course, the project starts week number two, something comes up, the business climate changes, something happens. How do we adapt to these changes that come up that just we know will come up during projects? Yeah, exactly. I mean, anybody that's uh, been involved in, in you know, custom software development knows that you, know, you do identify you know, new requirements as you go. Uh, you also, you know, identify areas that are more complex than you thought to maybe implement a specific requirement or user story. And, and one of the things that we really try to do is you know, at the front of a project as we, you know, go through that product backlog with our customers and we explain how we created it and we explain how we sized everything using these story points, you know, we really try to educate our customers in the, you know, thinking of, you know, the scope of the project being, you know, the number of story points that they're going to get that are associated with this, you know, product backlog of user stories. Hmm. And, and that's kind of the, the baseline that we kind of always, you know, go back to to say, you know, we committed at the start of this that we would, you know, develop a hundred story points worth of features, right, for this, for these hours and for this budget. And, and we kind of try to use that as the baseline. So in Agile, we, we talked about you know, every two weeks, you know, we develop a, a set of features that we deliver to the customer and we go through a, a process called a sprint review, which is where you kind of review what you've accomplished with the customer. You, you celebrate that. You take their feedback, right? So if any adjustments need to be made, you know, you're getting that feedback every two weeks. And then as a part of the sprint review, we also go into what we call sprint planning. So I, I talked about at the beginning of a project, we, we set a, a sprint schedule for all the sprints and we take the backlog that we started with and we break it up into these sprints. So when I get done with sprint one, for example, I'm gonna go ahead and, and look at my sprint two plans, what I originally had started. Mm -hmm. And when, when I do that, I'm also going to bring up, okay, so during Sprint 1, you know, we uncovered these five new user stories. And, you know, we estimate that these five new user stories are, let's say it's, it's 10 story points to implement these five stories. And so one of the things that we do as part of Sprint planning, when we're looking at that next Sprint, you know, we sit down with the customer and we say, we've got five new user stories, five mm -hmm. new sets of requirements are these user stories, are these requirements more important than what we already had planned for this next sprint? And if the answer is yes, yeah, some of these are more important and we need to have these included in the next sprint, then we, we work with them to say, okay, if, if we're going to take these new user stories and these requirements in and include those in scope, then, then something's got to be pushed out of scope, right? Because uh, overall, we're trying to hold the, the, the scope to the 100 story points that we started with as our baseline. And so they understand that. They understand that they've got to, you know, in order to include something new in scope, they've got to kind of push something out to a lower priority. And maybe if we, if we uh, operate faster than we thought we would, and maybe if we get more work done than we thought we would originally when we planned, we can still do those original stories. But in some cases you can't. And, and that's when things actually get moved out of scope. Um, and the other choice the customer has, Danny, you know, in that scenario where we've uncovered new requirements and we've kind of shared with them what those are, what the impact is in the way of size, which also impacts, you know, schedule and budget. You know, the other, you know, option they have is to say, you know, these new requirements are important and there's nothing I can move out of scope. I still need to have everything you originally stated plus these new requirements are important to me, 
And, and in that case, you know, that would lead us to create a change order with that customer. Mm -hmm. And we would expand scope, which would then impact budget and schedule. And, and the beauty of it is we're, we're doing that every two weeks. Yeah. So, you know, we're constantly, you know, it's that adapt, inspect and adapt kind of, uh, you know, principle behind Agile. You're constantly looking at where am I today? You know, what did what I get accomplished in this last sprint? What else new did I learn that's impacting my scope? What new user stories have I identified? And, and what do we want to do about that? Because we can't. We don't want to ignore it. We want to recognize that we've uncovered new requirements, and, and they're valid and they're important to the customer. And then we together decide, you know, how do we incorporate and include those new requirements you know, in the project? And we typically, for the back to statements of work, we'll typically write the statement of work around like a, a, a time and materials budget not not to exceed a certain amount, right? That's so that so so we we write it up that way, and then if we see that there's things that they want to pull in that would exceed that amount, that's where we would uh, talk through the uh, change order because, uh, you know, we need that additional budget and let them make the decision as far as whether those new features need to be included or not. Um, that, that's right. And in some know. cases, you know, if we're actually ahead of our original plan, in other words, if we're our velocity, the, the rate at which we can implement a story point is faster than we planned originally, maybe if we're we're better and more efficient, or maybe we found some ways to implement some stories that were simpler than we assumed when we did our original estimate. Yeah, it could be that we're kind of ahead of plan and ahead of budget, and we can actually, you know, take in additional user stories and not impact, you know, that original budget or timeline. And, and that happens in many cases. You do that way too much, Bruce. It really, really. <laughs> no, I am amazed that, um, you know, just Internally, I know we look at uh, from a planning perspective. If we're the SOW is at a let's say 100k, we're planning really to hit below that, more like 80k, because we're we're typically delivering the solution to people, not, not to overset expectations, but it just seems like we have the ability to manage to that budget and give something to someone that they really want under that budget. And how you know, that's really really important to customers. Yeah, it is, and that's one of the things that they, they like about Agile because they are seeing, you know, features delivered to them, put in their environment, right? Mm -hmm. So they can actually do their UAT testing, you know, early on and as they go. And you're constantly looking at the, the budget and and the scope every two weeks. So you've got that, you know, you're actually, you get such a, a great view into where you're at and, and whether you're ahead of what you thought or, or behind, and, and you get to make, those adjustments every two weeks, which is really important to customers. They really love that. That's awesome. Well, I just wanted to um, wrap us up here. This has been a great conversation. And again, I think we could talk for hours here. But I know one of the things that we've come up with through the years was the three will promise, which we've talked about um, internally quite a bit, where we the, the three C's, control, choice, and commitment. And I think that what we're talking about today really have to do with those things, with control, you know, we, we say that we, we provide this structure for clients to control priority of features and budget throughout the lifetime of the project. How important is that? You know, how important is it for the, the client to maintain control? Uh, choice, because we're delivering it every two weeks, um, we, you know, we're earning business every two weeks as well. We're, we're delivering software every two weeks. And, and the great team that you've put together, Bruce, and that are delivering every single day, uh, the last one is commitment. It's where people are really taking on the challenges like their 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 own challenges, and um, I love how committed we are to 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 clients. And you guys just do a wonderful job. It's so much fun talking to uh, clients after we're done with projects and and hearing what what's been done. So I appreciate you, Bruce, taking the time. Any uh, thoughts to wrap this up at all, or anything you want to add? No, just that uh, you know we really enjoy working with our our clients. Um, you know, I think they uh, enjoy our, our process and the way we attack these problems, and I think they appreciate, you know, the agile process that we bring to bear. It's, it's often, as, as you know, Denny, it's one of the things that, you know, customers call out when we, mm -hmm. you know, do surveys with them and, and try to understand, you know, their, you know, their level of satisfaction with, with three wheel. It's one of the things that they typically call out as uh, one of the things that they see as one of our strengths and that they really appreciate. So, yep. I think it's, I, I hear a lot from people that the re, uh, original reason why they brought us in was 
because of our technical experience. And then the reason why we stay around and why they want more projects from us is because of our process, because of what they see delivered uh, on projects, which is, is, is wonderful, wonderful to hear. So um, hopefully if you're, you've gotten to the end of this podcast, no, thank you for taking the time to do that. If you're a prospective client and uh, hopefully some of this has been, has helped you out a little bit or a current client, um, you know, really the whole estimation process, getting that, getting a handle on how much time it's going to take, how much the cost is going to take, that is part of what we do. That's a part of our sales process. So I highly encourage you to come to our website, reach out to us. We'll put together the details so that you really can put together a sound budget and something that's workable. And, and please feel free to reach out to us. You'll interact with myself and Bruce and folks from his team and it's just it's a it's a great process that we put together here Bruce thank you for taking the time to do this thank you Danny I enjoyed it you betcha have a great day thanks everybody for listening bye-bye